Mark Munoz, 23, on Twitter said, what would you say to someone wanting to run for Congress but has no idea where to start? Oof. Well, Mark, uh, what, what a great question. And I, I say, uh, I actually read a chapter about this in, in my book that's upcoming. There are books out there that talk about like the right way to run for Congress, uh, you know, um, but uh, in my opinion, there may not be any right way to run for Congress. There are a number of people who supported the presidential campaign who decided to take the plunge. Uh, here on Yang Speaks, we recently talked to two of them, uh, Wendy Hamilton and Erica Rhodes, and they had some background uh, of activism. Um, I think it's a real act of courage uh, and vision for both of them. Um, so, Mark, there are resources that will tell you the right way. Uh, you know, one thing to do is to get involved with local politics. Uh, another thing is just to try and take it on um, and, and see what you can do. Uh, Blair Walsingham's another person that comes to mind for me. She eventually raised over $100,000 and became the Democratic nominee um, in her district in, in Tennessee. The first thing I'd ask you is why you want to do it. Um, do you have a really powerful reason to run? And if that powerful reason is something where Andrew has, like, I think we need to rewrite the rules of the economy, then you should shoot for the moon. If there's like an awareness thing or that sort of thing. But if it's mainly, which is a lot of people running, is like, I think I would be better at this than most people because I'm a good person, I'm well-read, I'm articulate, I'm passionate, I like people, then you got to find the right race to run in. Um, and sometimes it's starting local and like building up slowly. Um, and you can stay at those offices for like short periods of time. You're not talking about, you know, waiting your time on a bench for years and years and years. Um, but the reality is you have to raise a bunch of money. So you gotta look and see who can, who can actually, who in my network, who in my friends of friends, who in the Democratic Party would actually be open to giving me 10, 20, 100, 1,000, whatever the yeah, name is. Or, or another party. Um, and so or, yeah, or the, Republican, yeah. Yeah, or the, the, the rule of thumb uh, for a congressional campaign um, is to imagine that you have to raise $300,000 in order to run in like a, a normal district, um, which is frankly well beyond the reach of like the vast majority of humans uh, in, in this country. I mean, like, you know, like like who's gonna, and it, it, it's not like you can have a rich uncle just give you 300K either. I mean, there's gonna be a contribution yeah, limit for in individuals so you have to get like a, a ton of people. Yeah, so uh, so Mark, that, that that is the rule of thumb or the conventional wisdom. I, I will say that sometimes fuck the conventional wisdom. I mean, who cares? But that that is something that, um, you know, the, the quote unquote experts uh, set as a benchmark. The problem with politics, one of it, like, it gets easier the longer you do it. The get, you know, so if you've been, if, you've, if you're a state rep, then it's easier to run for Congress. And if you're a Congress, it's easier to run for Senator. Like people, the, the establishment, it's an institution, right? It's like finance, it's like insurance. It's, it's a, there's a whole machinery around it. Now that said, I'm with Andrew sometimes, just gotta blow the whole thing up, which we did. I, think, I would say this, if you feel it in your heart, you should do it. Um, and it's hard, but it's super rewarding. And most people who talk about it done it. Like it's frustrating if you don't win. Um, but I, we need I know you. a lot of people who ran and did not win, and uh, they almost always grew a ton as a result. Um, and and I think that's true for people who run for lots of different offices. So I'd encourage you to run, Mark. Um, and if not for Congress, maybe for something else. Like I genuinely think it'll uh, make you a bigger person. Certainly, I grew a ton. Uh, you know, running for office. And I wouldn't be here hanging, talking to, to Zach and all of you right now, that's for sure. Um, uh, and uh, the last question I see here is from Sunny Wolf 42 Andrew, if you could talk to your younger self, what would you say? Zach, let me hit you with that. What would you tell young Zach? I would tell me to take more risk. Like, I wish I had jumped on an Andrew Yang bandwagon or plan earlier. Um, because I think, I think we're all in these, you're in this, like, we're all in these, whether it's lanes for some people where it's like, you go middle school and high school and college for, for some, or it's like, you feel like you're trapped in this. And I think, um, if you can take a crazy risk or get off that beaten path, um, you should, um, because we need people. That's where all the, that's where all the fun stuff happened. Cause everybody and their mother said, Andrew, you should not run for president. You have no reason doing it. Everybody. There's not one person. There's like, oh, you know, a small handful of people that said, go ahead and do it. But the vast majority were like, you're effing nuts. And it was the right decision ten tenfold, right? Um, so I wish, to me, I would wish I'd like learned to think outside the box a little differently and try to get off that path sooner. So that's what I would say. Um, but in one ways, I wouldn't want to change it because I ended up where I am. I don't work with you, so... Oh, well, thank you, Zach. That means a ton to me, man. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm so like 
thrilled and proud uh, that you and I work together. Like it's it's really an honor to to be able to work with you. Um, Likewise, brother. What would you say to your young self? For for me, I know it would be a, the advice that I probably could not never follow, um, which is just to try and take it easier on myself when I was younger. When I was younger, I was always so wrought up and caught up and just like down on myself because like I you know didn't do enough, wasn't uh, good enough, and whatever it was. Um, and, uh, or like, uh, you know, women, uh, didn't like me or call me back and it would like, you know, make me sad for days and days and days. Just uh, like, if I could tell myself just like, man, just, you know, be at ease, like things end up working out for you in ways that you can't imagine. Like it, it's good to try and genuinely like enjoy yourself in these moments. But I was very bad at that when I was younger. I, I really wasn't, uh, terribly at ease or laid back about what my present or future held. And I, I always felt like I, I needed to be doing something more. Uh, yeah, that there wasn't an, uh, as much joy as there could have been when I was young. Um, I have this strange exercise, Zach, that happens to me now where I, uh, I'm trying to go to sleep and maybe I can't sleep at night uh, or at least easily. I sleep quite well, just so everyone knows. But, um, but like maybe, you know, there's like uh, there are a few minutes when, when like you're having a hard time getting to sleep. And I start counting um, just one, two, three, four, five. And in each number, I try and remember something from that year of my life. So obviously I can't remember anything like one, two, three, and then four, I start remembering something, five. And I'm not remembering anything specific. It's like an image or a flash or an emotion. Uh, and then I just keep going five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and then eventually I'm getting into, you know, like 25, 30, 35, I don't like remembering like, you know, who I was and at least maybe like a moment of something I experienced uh, during that year of my life. Uh, and then by the time I get to 46, which is what I am now, um, you know, I'm sort of like in the present and somehow it relaxes me somehow like imagining this arc of, uh, you know, like, like the, the years of my life, like, you know, uh, then I, I kind of feel more at rest. But if you looked at like how, the way I was in year 24, 25, 26, 27. I was like always so tense and uh, um, trying to figure it out, uh, you know, trying to make progress. A lot of the times when I couldn't make progress, I would just do something that gave me a feeling of progress uh, that you can control. So like the basic one during those years for me was going to the gym. It's like, well, like, you know, maybe... Uh, you know, maybe relationships aren't exactly materializing the way I want, or maybe my career is not going the way I want, but I can pump this iron. <laughs> Personal max today, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could, like, I could do that. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, and you can argue whether that was like a healthy or uh, unhealthy way to channel that feeling. Uh, but I had that feeling my entire uh, um, 20s, I'd say. Um, I met Evelyn when I was 31. And I thank goodness that I didn't meet her until then because I just started to mellow out enough so that when, you know, she met me that I could, I, I could like be someone that frankly, you could build like a healthy long-term relationship with. And if she had met me at any other point, I, she like would not have, we would not be married today. Like I, I, I know this a hundred percent in part, Zach, um, because I don't know if people know this, but so I, I just, like start, you know, going out with Evelyn um, and then, uh, after like a few dates, um, she writes me an email and says like, Hey, I don't think we should see each other anymore. Um, and, uh, and then I take this email and like, I'm saddened obviously. Um, but then I genuinely write her back about how like, yeah, you know, I totally understand you should like, um, go, uh, like enjoy yourself and like, you know, have great experiences because she'd come out of like a long-term relationship at that point. And so she wrote me being like, essentially the, like, I'm not ready to actually date anyone. Um, and so I said like, yeah, like totally get it. Like, you know, like, uh, like I, I want you to, um, um, to go do like, uh, whatever it is that, you know, you wish you'd been doing this past period of months. And I, I hit send on this email and then I genuinely was like sat down on my couch was like, okay, I'm never going to see her again. And that was very sad, but like, I was actually able to accept it. And I would never have been able to accept it in any kind of like even moderately healthy way when I was 29, 28, 27. Like I, I would have been like completely um, keyed up. And then if I had written her back in, like it, it would have come through like how wounded I was. Um, 
Um, but because I was like at least somewhat at peace with it um, at the age of 31, she then called me like a couple days later and was like, hey, what are you doing? You want to like, which obviously <laughs> it was like mystified me completely because I was like, I thought I was not to. We just broke you up. Know, yeah. <laughs> see you again, uh, but I am free. And so I just, you know, went to where they were. And then the next night I would like say like the same thing happened several nights in a row where it was like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? And then each time, even after I'd go out and hang out with her and her friends somewhere, I'd be like, and never going to see her again. And like, it just happened <laughs> several times. <All> right. <laughs> so, um, you know, so I, I would try and go back in time and tell myself to relax. Um, but I, you know, I just wasn't capable of it at that point. So if you're young and you can relate to that, um, just so you know, you, you do mellow out. At least I did. I, I think you're like a relatively intense guy in like a um, in a productive way. So I'm I'm curious to think of curious to imagine what intense Andrew is like younger Andrew. Um, how much of a workhorse you probably were. If that's what you're talking about. But um, your answer made me rethink mine. Is like honest. Like as a kid, you. I wish I knew uh, not to care what other people think so much. You know, there's a I, Dr. Seuss has a quote. It's like. Uh, be who you are, say what you feel, I think, because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. And it's like, if you can't be yourself, you don't want to be around those people. If people don't like you for who you are, you don't want to be around them anyway. Um, I wish I knew that at a younger age. I kind of learned that in college. And look, if it weren't for that email, man, we wouldn't be here for sure. I, I genuinely have <laughs> that. I was like, I, I really should just like uh, be be thanking uh my lucky stars uh, for whatever i put in that email, <laughs> that email. every freaking day because like who knew that's who your angel knew? got in your hand man anyway guys thank you for tuning into our mailbag we'll try and do this a little more often if we can the schedules are thank crazy you, thank you, know. you thank you for uh being here for me and zach and the podcast and supporting us it means the world to both of us uh i'm so thrilled that we got to this 100th episode celebration uh, here's to a hundred more then a hundred more after that. Um, because this, this podcast is really special to me and important to me. Like it, it's something that, uh, I value, um, that, you know, just because it's like, uh, like it enables me to, um, think and process and interact and socialize sometimes in like a particular way. Like I, I'm, I'm so grateful and we couldn't do this without everyone listening to this right now. So just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart.